But I think on a macro level, the primary objective of a religion is to restore and contain some degree of traditional value within the society. How do you judge, let me change the way I, I worded that. How do you judge the success of a religion? I don't think you can judge it by the number of people who join it, because there's lots of people who are Catholic who don't act Catholic. They don't act in any way particularly Christian. Anyone can say they're something. You can walk into a strip club and everyone says they're oh, Christian. It doesn't mean anything, right? So how do you judge the success of a religion? Well, I like to think the best way to judge the success of a religion is how successful is it at fighting evil? How successful is it at preserving the morality of a population in X parameter, in, in X geographical area? Okay, let's stop the video right there for a second. Let's stop right there, right there. Because within this description, from Andrew Tate about why he chose the religion of Islam over Christianity or even over atheism shows us why Andrew Tate per, uh, diagnoses the problem correctly, right? He and I can sit here, and even though we have wildly different worldviews, we can both recognize the reality that in our Western culture, there is an assault on masculinity. There is a war being fought against men. His diagnosis of the problem, his recognition of that reality is correct. But then the question, after you recognize the reality of something, I mean, you and I always sit here and say, we have to recognize the reality of the political enemy that we face in order to order our actions to fight against it. If we don't recognize the reality, we won't fight well against it. You do have to ask the question, okay, well, once I recognize this reality, what do I do about it? What is the solution? What is the prescription to address the diagnosis? And that is where Andrew Tate goes wildly astray. His diagnosis is correct and his prescription is poison. His prescription is utter poison. And the reason for that, the reason that his prescription is so wildly off base is he articulated it in this answer. The primary purpose of a religion. Well, what is the primary purpose of a religion? If you are a Christian or you are a Jew or you are a Muslim, then you understand that the primary purpose of a religion is to worship God the primary purpose of a religion. I'm not trying to give you a homily here. I'm just, I'm just stating what religions believe their purposes are. The primary purpose of a religion is the salvation of souls. It's the, it's, it's the eternal salvation of souls, not just this life on earth, but in the afterlife as well. But Andrew Tate doesn't recognize that about the religion that he claims to be a part of. He claims that a successful religion is one that properly orders society. So he's using religion not for the primary purpose, not for what a religion believes itself to be, but he's using religion just for its secular function, that when people are ordered um, along, uh, um, along morals, uh, if they have a general understanding in a society of right and wrong, of good and bad, of justice, then their society functions better. It is a more effective society. Well, that is not the primary purpose of a religion. So Andrew Tate's prescription is wrong because he actually has no sense of morality.